it's a hamlet. We're fortunate enough to have a beautiful area to live in. As a community, it's lovely. May last year, 2013, we suffered another flash flooding event, the second in eight years. Anyone in the low-lying property was just inundated. It was dreadful. Within another foot or two, then our property would have been flooded. And some of them were out of the properties for at least 12 months. This was the second time in eight years that we've been flooded catastrophically. In 2005, we were flooded um, and it was in the middle of the night. Carlisle was also flooded, so we had five days without electricity. Happened on a Saturday morning, during the day, in May. Who would have thought? And I think that was what made me as an individual and the rest of the community think, we've got to do something about this. It was four or five of us went around every single household um, in the village, explained what we wanted to do, um, got them to sign a piece of paper with the email address so we could keep them updated whether or not they'd be interested in helping out at the river clearance sessions um, and really just snowboard from there. Obviously clearing a lot of the trees from the bank, it wasn't catching any of the debris that was in the river, um, so really it was able to flow a lot more freely and I say the quicker we can get the water out of the village then the less chance we have of it building up and uh, flooding. We've got risk assessments and method statements um, that we need to put in sort of seven days beforehand um, just so we can get it, the environment agency can accept what we're doing, okay it, and then we can crack on. I'm a treasurer of a large uh, voluntary organisation, so I use that experience to get the group formally constituted um, which isn't really very difficult. Um, there's lots of help out there to do that through uh, Cumbria CVS and other organisations. And that way, when you're formally const constituted, you can actually apply for, for grants and get funding. And by being a constituted group, which isn't that difficult, it's not that complicated, um, it's not that scary, um, it means that you're protected as individuals and you're representing the community as that group. So far we've been very fortunate that uh, through the County Council and the local councillor we secured a thousand pounds which has been a good start-up funding and that's managed to pay for a lot of the special equipment that we've wanted for our flood wardens but we have also applied for funding um, and in September we're one of the finalists for the Lloyds Bank Community Awards. We got together as a group and started to think about to make things happen we needed to do a lot of roles and responsibilities so we had a chairman a technical person community and stakeholder and my job is about linking with people organizations bodies that a might help us to understand why the flooding is happening and b be conduits or channels to funding in addition to the voluntary activity that we're doing how do you link everything together because really we're looking at a lot of complex issues so we looked at best practice uh, actions and and ways of bringing different groups together and we've applied what's called in business an ecosystem approach with we as the community to drive the changes nobody is stopping us to spend money on flood resilience it's just there's not enough of it so therefore we need to maximize the impact of where it is spent and we hope to be able to help the government and other bodies to do that in the most effective way. After the floods in 2005, it was the most horrible feeling. You stood there, you watched the water come up and you could do, you were just paralysed. Fortunately, we didn't flood. So after that, I sat down and thought, I will never put myself in this position again. I want to know what to do when. And that was the start of it. The first thing is, to make your own personal flood plan and then think outside the box and the next thing to do is visit the Environment Agency website. And they also of course have a template for the emergency flood plan and if you download that and sit and work through it, how it relates to your area, you're well on the way to your plan. We engaged with um, the council, the Environment Agency, uh, the politicians uh, very early on and uh, the first thing we did was um, we managed to persuade the Environment Agency to fund a rack mark survey so that's all the 
debris on the wire fences that would then show us how far the, the flood water had got to. All that should help us to calculate how big the interventions that we need to put in uh, will have to be. We uh, managed to, to get a funding for an MSc student to come and do a year's surveying of the, uh, of the area um, and that will enable us hopefully to, uh, to actually have a design for the interventions. The idea at the end of that is that we can then design small interventions and what we're trying to do there is to slow the, uh, or, or not even slow but <coughs> to separate the peaks of all the individual tributaries. One of the big causes for flash flooding is when all the tributaries flood simultaneously and the water just can't get out down, out the river quick enough. So if we can slow those individual tributaries um, and make sure they don't all peak um, at the same time, then hopefully, although we've got the same volume of water coming down the river, it's spread over a much longer time. The, uh, the final part of the uh, jigsaw is to, is to work with the farmers and the landowners uh, to encourage them to allow us to put these interventions in. So it's a combination of all those factors that we hope will then stop the, uh, the water um, getting into the houses in the future. Well, my name is Jeff Tomlinson and I'm the warden for one of the five zones that we have in the Stockdale-Worth and Highbridge community and I look after zone four. My role really comes into being when there is a potential of an actual flood. At least we were prepared if something does happen. For example, we all have in each zone a set of local handheld radios. If at night we do have a problem, it's very much a case of doing that. <laughs> and I think I'm just one small cog in that team to advise people in advance if there is a problem. I can then take some adequate steps to then help and hopefully not hold the water back but save properties and people because that's the important thing. The residents have also put self-help measures in place to protect their properties from flooding. New walls, moving the location of gates, increasing the ground level, fitting frames for temporary flood defences and raising the heights of windows. There's a reward because you're doing something for the community. And it's amazing with, I think, um, when we got to do the river clearance, I got to know a lot of my neighbors better than anything. It's brought this community together, which is great.